Thank you very much, teacher. It's now my pleasure to read from the citation that's being presented to our recipients. On this, the 26th day of March 2009, the Rockefeller University honors you, Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Greider, and Vicki Lundblad as recipients of the 2008 Perlmeister Green Guard Prize. Through your elegant experiments and brilliant insights, you have revealed the importance of telomerase, the enzyme that synthesizes telomeres, the protective ends of chromosomes. You've demonstrated that telomerase plays a key role in maintaining the integrity of the genome, shedding light on this enzyme's involvement in cancer and the aging process. Elizabeth Blackburn, you identified unique DNA sequences of telomeres and predicted the existence of telomerase. You then co-discovered this vital enzyme, launching the modern field of telomere biology. Carol Greider. You co-discovered the enzyme telomerase and provided critical information about its unusual structure and activity. Your work has elucidated the role of telomerase in building and maintaining telomerase. Vicki Lundblad. You isolated the genes that encode telomerase proteins and showed that cells lacking telomerase will lose their telomeres and die. Your innovative studies are explaining how telomerase function is regulated. Today, in presenting you with the Perlmeister Green Guard Prize, we recognize and thank you for your transformative discoveries, your distinguished leadership in the international scientific community, and your many enduring contributions to our understanding of fundamental processes in the biological world. It's my honor this evening uh, to present two Drs. Elizabeth Blackburn, Carol Greider, and Vicki Lundblad, the Perlmeister Greenguard Prize, an international award recognizing outstanding women in biomedical science. On behalf of the distinguished jury of the Perlmeister Greenguard Prize and all of us here today, we congratulate the three of you very warmly um, on this award. And I think I now give you these, is that right? Okay, this, this bit I wasn't quite sure of, but... <laughs> So if the three of you will just uh, join each other at the table, we're going to have a bit of a panel discussion, I believe, led by uh, Ticha. This is very unusual for us. You have to realize that we've operated in the same field for, what? <laughs> An embarrassing number of years. And we've, we've had many discussions, one on one, and even a setting like this, not particularly with water, I must say. <laughs> So you, have, you will have to forgive me if I ask you questions which you know that I know the answer, but this is to illuminate the audience, okay? Um, so first, I know there is a very interesting anecdote about how Carol and Vicky found out about this award. Do you want to share that with us? I guess it was about a year ago now. And uh, I had been invited to the Salk Institute to give a seminar, and Vicki was hosting me. And um, I had talked to a variety of faculty members, and then went to Vicki's office to talk with her. And we came out of her office, and there was a FedEx envelope sitting in her uh, inbox. And we were on the way to go to give my seminar, and she looked and she said, FedEx from Rockefeller? Ah, oh, it must be a manuscript to review, and she put it back. <laughs> <laughs> we then went. <laughs> I gave my seminar, and we came back, and then we were going to go out for dinner. And she said, do you mind just a minute? I want to open this FedEx letter from Rockefeller. <laughs> <laughs> and so she opened the letter and read it a little bit. A little you can bit. tell your version of this. I read it a little bit and put it back. And I thought, that's odd. And then she opened it again and read it a little bit more. And, and her eyes lit up. She said, Carol, do you know about this? <laughs> I said, know about what? <laughs> So I handed it to Carol. So the reason I, I opened it 
and read just a little bit and put it back in was I read uh, Carol and Liz's names and I, I thought, I mean I read literally just a sentence or so, saw Carol and Liz's names and thought I'm being asked to write something about Carol and Liz. So I put it right back in because there was Carol sitting right next to me. And there was sort of this delay and I realized I didn't read that sentence completely, opened it all the way and went, oh no, this is something completely different. And at that point handed it to Carol and Carol read it. I read it. it and I thought, wow, Vicky's getting an award. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just given my seminar, I was a little excited, yeah. and then she said, did you read it? <laughs> and I read the whole thing and, and, and I was quite stunned. It was really, really an honor, first of all, to realize I was getting the award and to be there with Vicky it was. Uh, together, it, it was, it was uh, really, I had it to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite amazing. So let's get serious here about telomeres uh, and telomerase. Um, I have a question about, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of timely because we, we hear a lot about stem cells and, and um, our new administration has ne just made an important announcement of, about stem cells, a yes we can announcement. Um, we know that stem cells proliferate indefinitely. And so they somehow have solved the telomere problem, the end replication problem, and maintain their telomeric DNA. But now there is a new way to make stem cells by, uh, developed by Yamanaka in which you can just take an adult cell from the human body and then pepper it with a couple of genes and they get reprogrammed and start behaving like stem cells. So what happens with the telomeres in this setting? Liz, can you tell us what, what is the consequence of reprogramming human stem cells and is telomerase switched on in those settings? I'm assuming that it is. I have a postdoc who's going to start asking that question, so I hope, it, I hope that's true. Logically, we would think it's going to happen. There are alternative ways in which cells sometimes can maintain telomeres without telomerase, as Vicky discovered in Baker's Yeast again. When you take away their telomerase, they run them down, they get very sick, but a few crawl up out of the uh, mess, and Vicky found they have an alternative method. So theoretically, these stem cells might have this alternative. I'm predicting they don't, because telomerase probably helps the telomeres be particularly healthy. But lovely question. <laughs> and it's and being worked on. We'll get back to you. In, yes, in a, in a year and, and probably the answer is, is known, but, but, but there are two possible answers to your question. So it's going to be fun to find out, as in, as in all stem cell questions. <laughs> 